you struggle with those clear but very harsh commands of God? Welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. This week we are in 1 Samuel chapter 15. I've titled this chapter, The Consequences of Disobedience. So here are verses 1 through 3 of chapter 15. They are a doozy. Hold on to your scripture journals for just a second. And Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore listen to the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. <laughs> I told you it was a doozy. Okay. A lot of people, when they read verses like these, are disturbed by the very violent commands of God. They often read them apart from history and condemn and categorize what they read as genocide or maybe ethnic cleansing, which in my opinion is a very short-sighted view of what God is stating here. What we read here is God's delayed judgment on a very long history of violence by the Amalekites. So who are the Amalekites. Well, they were the descendants of Esau. Amalek was Esau's grandson. Now, what instigated this judgment is that Amalek and the Amalekites were the first human threat to the people of Israel after the Exodus when they came into the promised land. You might remember the story. It's that epic moment when Moses is standing on the hill watching the battle between the Israelites and the Amalekites and, and Aaron and Hur are on either side of Moses helping to hold up his arms and his staff because when they held his arms and staff up, they were winning. And when his arms dropped, they lost. Well, after that battle, God told Moses to write down in the book that there would come a day when he would, quote, utterly blot out the memory of of Amalek from under heaven, end quote. And for many years, the Amalekites, who were a nomadic people, continued to be a violent, hostile people to the Israelite. And God is about to bring that to an end. Now, let me just say this regarding stuff like this in the Bible. We need to wrestle with God's justice. But sometimes our myopic view of justice fails to account for God's extraordinary perspective on justice. I mean, the more that I get to know God in his scripture, the less I question his commands. Even the harsh ones that display the harshness of his justice. But I will say, when I was younger and I knew the scriptures less well, I was, I was troubled by even the simple commands of God, not even the harsh ones. I had trouble seeing how bad company would corrupt good morals or how sex outside of marriage was a sin against my own body. But with age and exposure to scripture, I came to discover that in each and every instance, there was great spiritual wisdom and perspective behind each one of these commands of God, even the harshest ones. Therefore, over time, I've learned to trust God and his commands and his justice because I know that there's greater wisdom that he has than I have. And today I see some things that I did not see before. We call that wisdom, right? In this instance, God's command is to wipe out an entire tribe. And many modern readers are troubled by this because they have no context for the command. And they don't see what the people of the day easily saw and understood, even the people in the time of the Exodus. Therefore, they take these verses all out of context and call what is bad good and what is good bad, perverting truth and things like justice and even God's promises in the Bible. And we do this because we're fully convinced that our perspective of justice is more progressive and developed than God's, which is totally laughable. I mean, our perspective on this life and God's judgment is never more progressive and loving and just and merciful than God's. That is sheer stupidity and even arrogance. We will never know more than God. And that's what I've come to learn about moments like this in scripture. So today, I would encourage you to get to know the riches of God's wisdom by being obedient more quickly 
even in those moments that you don't fully understand. Now, I want to say it is okay to ask the hard questions and to get some good answers. But sometimes don't ask the question so long that it delays your obedience. Sometimes delayed obedience is disobedience. Sometimes delayed obedience is disobedience. So if God is calling you to do something today, even though you don't like it, can I encourage you just to do it? Just do it. Don't miss out on the opportunity to get to know the deep wisdom of God by doing what he has commanded, even when you don't like it or don't fully understand it. Because I promise on the other side, it will be a blessing to you. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else and live all in for him who lived all in for you.